Hey guys, the other night I was preparing my evening meal, some spicy goujons and sweet potato fries in the air fryer. Very nice too. I glanced out the window and noticed that there was a beautiful blush of colour in the sky. I wasn't prepared for this and I fancied taking a photograph of it. So I grabbed my car keys and headed for the door. I didn't take my main X-T4 camera, except I just took my iPhone because it takes beautiful, high-resolution raw images. And I thought it'd be cool to show you guys how I edit those raw images using the darling of the Mac photo editing world, Photomator, now owned by Apple, don't you know? Uh, I'm going to use some basic raw editing skills, a little bit of curves. We're also going to use the layers of functionality. So let's hop onto the Mac and I'll show you how it all works. Here's the iPhone raw photo we're going to be editing today. As you can see, it's the full resolution up here. It says 8064 by 6048 pixels. So a nice big high resolution photo. And there's dynamic range tucked away in this photograph that we can pull out so we're going to click on the edit button just to open that up and the deal with raw photographs if you want to get the best out of them in your post processing is not to use global adjustments if at all possible you don't want to affect the entire image you want to affect the different zones the regions the colors the textures of the image but that being said one global change I am going to make is I'm going to warm this up very slightly. So I've got the temperature slider here. It's on 0%. You can see we've got blue on the left with cool temperatures, like 4,000 Kelvin, that down, way down there. And on the right, we've got the yellow, the warmer temperature. It's up to about 7,500, but we don't need much. Just a little bump there, maybe 2%. Just warm that up very slightly. And you can see there's some pinks in these clouds. I'm just going to accentuate those very slightly with a slight tint increase of 2%. Now, believe it or not, that is all I'm going to do in terms of global changes. We're now going to start using some layers. So I'm going to come up to the raw layer button here. I'm going to click on this plus button. I'm going to ask the AI, the machine learning, to select the sky. So let's click that. And it's done an okay job. It's selected a little bit of the water here, but that's okay. We can fix that up because if we click on here and on this little three dots in a circle here, we can subtract from that with the brush tool. So I'm just going to grab that. You can hit the square brackets either way to increase or decrease the size of the brush. I'm just going to paint out this bit of water here that we don't want selected and a little bit of boat. Going to drop that brush size right down, get rid of all that, make sure none of the boat is selected. So now we have a perfect sky. Oh, it's a little bit showing through there. Let's get rid of that. Perfect sky mask. So the first thing we're going to do on this is drop the highlights down slightly. And we're also going to decrease the brightness a little bit. What I'm trying to do is pull up this detail on the horizon here. Let's just close that up and come down to brightness and drop that down. And look on the horizon, can you see the clouds? Now you don't want to go too far because when you're editing raw images, it's important to retain those parts of it that we're used to seeing with the human eye that tell us that something's a long way off in the distance. And as you get further towards the horizon, things obviously get a lot hazier. So you don't want to lose that too much. You just want to make a little bit more detail in there. Bring the black point down very slightly as well. Looking at a little bit better, we can also bump up the clarity a little bit on the sky. Now I'm just rocking the slider backwards and forwards and judging by an eye how I can go far enough that it's making an impact, but not too far that it starts to degrade the quality of the image. Because so if I crank this all the way up, you know, it just looks completely unrealistic. We don't want that. Okay, so it's looking a little bit washed out. So what we're going to do is bring up the vibrance. Vibrance, remember, 
increases the saturation of the least saturated pixels. And so you should always try and use vibrance instead of saturation in the first instance, because saturation increases the saturation of everything. It's a global adjustment. The vibrance is just going to pick out the least saturated pixels. So let's just drag that up. And as you can see, that's brought back a lovely wash of color exactly where we wanted it. I've got this bump to clarity here, but what I'm going to do is click on the selective clarity button. And you should always try and use the selective clarity in the first instance, because typically speaking, you don't want clarity in the highlights. I tend to click on selective clarity and just bump it there. So we're getting some beautiful cloud definition now. And I think what we'll do now is just tweak the curves. And we're going to use the photographer's favorite, the S curve. So what we're going to do, this is, this is a dynamic range. If not familiar with the curves tool down here, we have got the darkest portion of the image and up here we've got the brightest parts of the image. And I'm just going to drag down here. So we're darkening the darker portions towards the far end of the histogram. And as you can see, as I'm bringing that down, we're getting some increased contrast there up in the sky. And I'm just going to come to the highlights. I'm just going to give a little bit of a tweak there. So what we're doing is we're just increasing the contrast by using this curves adjustment. That's looking pretty nice. Now we want to do the rest of the image. And the easiest way of selecting the rest of the image is to just duplicate your mask that you've got from the sky and invert it exactly as I would do in Adobe Lightroom. So I click on the little circular thing again, and then I go duplicate and invert. And let's just call that ground so we don't get confused. So you can see the other adjustments we already made in here. And what we're going to do is click off that. And we need to reset this. We don't want these changes. They pertain only to the sky. So let's reset all that. All we want to do here really is increase clarity in the midtones. Help that up a little bit to texture. Might bring the black point down just to increase the contrast ever so slightly. Boost the shadow so we don't lose the detail in the bait. Tiny little hint of brightness. Now I've actually cranked up the temperature even more because that sand was looking pretty washed out. So I've just boosted that up, made it a little bit more yellow. It's quite yellowy sand. That's looking pretty good. All we need to do now, I think, is straighten that horizon. So I've gone to the crop tool. And let's click on auto straighten. That's done a nice job. Click back to edit so we can see what it looks like. And we can do a before and after. So I'm going to hit command C here. And here's where we came from. It's quite a washed out image not a lot of detail in the sky at all and then we changed it to that where we've got the detail back in the clouds we've increased the saturation levels of the least saturated parts of that sky so it's not blown out it doesn't look unnatural we haven't gone crazy on the horizon it still looks realistic with this haziness as you head off there and we've had a little bit of contrast to the foreground and the boat. And there you go, guys. That's all there is to it. The layers tool in Photomator is very powerful. Certainly when you combine it with those AI selection tools, makes selecting skies, subjects and stuff like that super easy. And localized adjustments are where it's at. So try and apply that in your own edits. Hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, do please give it a like, and uh, if you'd like to see more of this type of content, these little tutorials with uh, editing software such as Photomate, and then leave me a comment in the comment section and below this video. All right, that will do us. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.